Hello and welcome to Cameo, Exeter's premier film show. We're here at the 57th annual BFI London Film Festival for the first of our two-part special. And here's what's coming up on the show. We attend the press conferences for Labour Day and Philomena before giving our thoughts on the films. We also discuss some of the most controversial foreign entries on show, including Blue is the Warmest Colour. But first, Chris takes a look at the opening night gala premiere of Tom Hanks' latest film, Captain Phillips. This is Mask Alabama. We are an unarmed freighter. We have two skiffs approaching with armed intruders. Chances are it's just fishermen. They're not here to fish. Launching this year's festival, Captain Phillips is a new thriller from British filmmaker Paul Greengrass, famed for his instalments in the Bourne franchise, as well as United 93. The film follows the eponymous captain, played by Hanks, in his struggle with four Somali pirates who hijack his cargo ship. Based on a true story and shot in Greengrass's verite style, this is a heart-pounding thriller that remains grounded, well, afloat, even when pushing our suspension of disbelief. This is due in part to the humanity with which the pirates are presented, as well as Hanks' portrayal of Phillips as a believable everyman. This is his best performance in years, and builds to a devastating finale. Tense, exciting, and brilliantly directed, Captain Phillips shouldn't leave anyone with a sinking feeling. We give it four stars. I'm the captain now. Captain Phillips, can you hear me? Captain Phillips, can you hear me? Next, I checked out the new comedy drama Enough Said, from writer-director Nicole Holfsener. Written and directed by Nicole Holfsener, Enough Said brilliantly exposed the question, what if I knew how my relationship could end? The film stars Julia Louise Dreyfus as Eva, a divorced single parent of one, and James Gandolfini as the sweet, unconventional heartthrob Albert. As their relationship blossoms, Eva becomes smitten, until bemusing conversations with a befriended massage client lead her to wonder how enjoyable a future she'd have with Albert. We met up with Nicole on the red carpet to find out more. I definitely wanted Albert to come across as uh, more dignified because the character of Eva is behaving like such a buffoon that she should be put in her place, absolutely. And um, But in the end, I mean, everybody's uh, multifaceted and good and bad and there is no real evil unless you're Hitler. And there's no Hitler in this movie. <laughs> On the whole, the film was knowing, engaging and entertaining. With some well-rounded characters, it was let down only by its conclusion, so we give this film three stars. Want a kiss? Yeah. A midlife crisis and a heartbreaking story of loss are the subject of the new film by Stephen Frears, director of The Queen. Philomena is based on the true story of Philomena Lee, an elderly Irish Catholic who reveals a secret from her past to struggling journalist Martin Sixsmith. Together they embark on a quest to find Philomena's son learning as much about themselves as they do about him. We went along to the film's press conference to find out what the stars had to say on this incredible story. I always liked the double-sided thing that on top of this tragic story was a, what I kept calling a romantic comedy. But it just seemed, always seemed very, very interesting and very moving and very funny. Good God, what more do people want? <laughs> <laughs> I think because I'm Irish and because uh, uh, I was raised a Catholic, I felt like I had some license to talk about it uh, with, uh, and avoid the cliches. What is extraordinary is how these two people come, come through something like that, how both of them do it in actual fact. I would like to think that in those circumstances I would have behaved like that, but I know that I wouldn't have done. That is what the film is about. It's the power of forgiveness of somebody. Philomena is a moving and enjoyable film, with Freer's direction simple and understated, ensuring that the focus stays on the characters. Judy Dench and Steve Coogan give strong performances, but it's ultimately the film's script which proves the real star. Authored by Coogan and Jeff Pope, it deals with themes including faith, family and identity, with sincerity as well as humour. However, in the end the film feels televisual, lacking the directorial finesse to raise it to the heights of other cinematic dramas. We give the film three stars. Almost 400 films were shown at this year's London Film Festival, meaning there's something for everyone from major Hollywood releases to indie flicks in all conceivable genres. We checked out two very different thrillers in the form of Night Moves and Parkland. The former stars Jesse Eisenberg and Elle Fanning in the latest film from director Kelly Reichardt. Night Moves follows a trio of environmentalists who plan to blow up a dam. Despite a strong cast and beautiful cinematography, the second half of the story disappoints. We give it three stars. Early lunch today. 
I want everybody downstairs to see the present. Now they've turned on to Elm Street. Ah, there he is! An ensemble cast stars forgotten figures from history in Parkland. Set in the days surrounding the assassination of John F. Kennedy, the film is filled with interesting details, but ultimately tries to fit in too much to its running time, leaving the characters undeveloped and the film unsatisfying. We give it three stars. Foreign films are a fascinating way of seeing the world through the eyes of another culture, and the London Film Festival showcases the very best in world cinema. This year, the festival played host to 57 different countries, including India, Italy, Australia, Sweden and Japan. During our time at the festival, I checked out two very powerful and emotive French dramas, while Cam went for something a little tougher. Yes, I did. Dubbed a serial killer creation story, of good report is the controversial creation from writer and director Jamil Kubeka. After moving to a new village, schoolteacher Parker has illicit relations with an underage student called Nolitha. As Nolitha's situation worsens, Parker's paranoid hysteria turns to violence as he tries to maintain the secrecy of his affair. We met with Jamil to find out more. So I am here now with Jamil Kubeka, the writer and director of Of Good Report. So what was the inspiration for the story? I needed to prove to myself that I'm actually a filmmaker. That was like my major motivation, to be honest with you. I felt that if I take away his voice, his actions will become even more abhorrent and, and more disturbing, you know. And um, yeah, Parker's a very noisy character. I didn't really feel like I wanted to hear what he has to verbally say because his actions speak way louder than any words. I ended up creating an archetypal story about the origins of a serial killer. And that's what it is. Unfortunately, these themes didn't come across clearly in the film, and although it did manage to shock audiences into an uncomfortable silence, it soon became sickening and unbearable, so we give a good report two stars. Yeah, not sure if I'm going to be checking that one out. Well, my experience was a little bit different. First up was Blue is the Warmest Colour, based on the graphic novel Blue Angel, and winner of this year's Palm Door at the Cannes Film Festival. Set over a number of years, the film follows protagonist Adele as she begins to understand and explore her homosexuality after a chance encounter with the blue-haired Emma. Emma and Adele become an item, and the film graphically depicts the highs, lows and intimate moments of their relationship, shot almost entirely in close-up by director Abdelatif Kashish. This is an intense and sometimes uncomfortable viewing experience, especially at almost three hours in length. The second film I saw was The Past, made by Asghar Fahadi, the director of the Oscar-winning Iranian film, A Separation. The film stars Veronese Bejo as a woman finalizing her divorce in order to marry her new lover. The narrative deftly moves between her, her fiancé, and former husband, and how the changing relationships affect their children. With a superb script and near-flawless performances from the entire cast, this is a mesmeric yet melancholy drama that I've given four stars, while Blue is the Warmest Colour gets three. One of the most anticipated films of this year's festival was Labor Day, the new film by Jason Reitman. We went to Leicester Square to check out the film, as well as see Josh Brolin and a heavily pregnant Kate Winslet walk the red carpet for the gala premiere. Currently touring the film festival circuit, Labor Day is the latest film from Jason Reitman, director of Up in the Air and Juno. Adapted by Reitman from the Joyce Maynard novel of the same name, the film stars Kate Winslet and Gatlin Griffiths in his debut performance as mother and son, whose lives are turned upside down when they take in an escaped injured convict played by Josh Brolin. Seen through the eyes of Griffiths' character Henry, this new addition to the family is both a threat and a source of salvation. He may be a criminal, but he's the father that Henry always wanted, and he aids his mother through her depression. At the film's press conference, here's what the stars and director had to say about the film. I started reading the book, it started coming uh, to life in my head, and by the end I'd fall in love with the story and wanted to make it, but I was really scared because it was different from anything I'd ever done. For whatever reason, and that is I think how Joyce wrote it, she does find herself trusting, trusting in the most unlikely of men. Mm. And realizes a thing very quickly. <laughs> no. Sorry. Yeah. You'll have the turn. I'm you? sorry. You have somebody who's been imprisoned for 19 years, who's just escaped from prison, and then you put him together with a woman who's been imprisoned, emotionally imprisoned, for as long as she has. And, you know, people say, oh, how unlikely this is. I've heard it a couple of times. It's not very likely that this would happen. And then you go in to go, you know, watch Jurassic Park and you go, but this would? <laughs> Early 
on, my big thing to him was to just say, you're terrified, don't worry. So am I, and so is Josh, and so is Jason, and so is everyone else here on this film crew. And that's that, the kind of that set I, some... I lead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just knew that I had to really be his friend and wanted to be his friend and wanted to guide him and just, I mean, he was really my priority on the set. Reitzman brilliantly captures the sweaty claustrophobia of the house in this moving and often tense drama. Although at times the film tests our suspension of disbelief, it is ultimately a heartwarming film that just fails to live up to the heights of Reitman's previous efforts. We give Labour Day three stars. So that's it for the first instalment of our BFI London Film Festival extravaganza. Join us next time when we'll be reviewing some potential Oscar winners with Inside Lewin Davis and 12 Years a Slave, as well as catching up with all the Tom H's, Hardy, Hiddleston and Hanks, as well as a certain Mr JGL. We hope to see you soon.